In this video, we'll look at how to have the Texas Instruments graphing calculator graph the derivative of a function. So we'll need to type the function in y1, and we'll work with the example f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1. And I'll first show you the TI-84 plus silver edition, and then I'll show you the TI-83. So in y equals, we want to type our function. So x, and I'm going to go to math 3 to get my x cubed quickly. And then I have plus 2x squared, and then plus 1. And then we need to go down to y2. So again, let me do that in the TI-83. So in y1, I need x math 3 plus 2x squared plus 1, and then go down to y2. Then for um, the calculator to actually calculate the derivative, in the TI-84+, plus, I need to go to math and choose the eighth option. So math 8, when we do that, we have math, and we only have seven options showing in the screen. Um, you can just choose 8, but uh, math 8 is end derive. But when we press enter, this newer edition gives me this uh, notation all ready to be filled in. So we want to put an x because it's doing the derivative with respect to x. So right in this space, we want an x. And then in the parentheses, we wish to put y1. Now the way you get to that is you press the variables key, which is v-a-r-s, right next to the clear key. So hit the variables key. And then you need to move over until you hit the y variables. So you want to go over to y variables. And then because uh, it's our function rather than any of these, um, we'll just press enter and choose the y1. OK, now we have y1 in our parentheses. We still need to put an x down here in this box. So just move to the right. And um, what this would do, if you put a number here, it would calculate the derivative of this function at that specific number. But what we want it to do is graph the derivative, which means we're not saying a specific x value. We just want it to go with all of the x's. So we'll just put an x there. And then when you press Enter, the calculator will graph. There's our function. And then there's our derivative. Now I'm going to change the window on this one so that I have an x min of negative 5 and an x max of 5. So it won't be so much empty space. That's our function. And then there's our derivative. Now we'll come back and look at that to compare those in just a minute. Let me show you how to get the derivative on the TI-83. So we have, again, math 8 we need. So math is the button right below alpha. So math, and then we're going to choose math 8. And it'll put this in there. It doesn't give us the symbols like we had with the newer edition. But that's OK. We have n derived. Now we need a y1. So remember to get the y1. We need the VARS button, the variables. And then we need to go over to y variables. And then we need to choose our function option. And then we need to choose y1. So press Enter when we choose those. Now we need a comma separating our arguments here. The comma is right below the sign key. There's our sign. And then right below that is our comma. So we'll go ahead and press the comma. And then we need an x comma x. 
So x and then comma again, x and close the parentheses. Now when we hit graph, we'll get our function right there. So let me go ahead and change my window on this one to a negative 5 minimum and a 5 max. So we have less blank space. Now let's sketch our curve so we can talk about it. We are wanting to compare a function and its derivative. Our function looks like it comes up like this. Okay. And then our derivative, I'll do that one in red. And notice this is a third degree, one arm up and one arm down. Um, and then our derivative is a parabola. Um, let's see, it crosses the axis here. So, it's down, crosses the axis, and then crosses the axis at the origin, looks like, and then comes back up. Okay, so this one is my derivative, and the black one is my function. And now before we put the calculator away, we really need, this one's pretty obvious that this point is the origin, but we need to find out what this point is, where the derivative crosses the axis. Um, I'm going to find that, though, on the function, because the function reaches its maximum point at that x value as well. So uh, we can do that with second calc and then uh, choose maximum, so choice four. And then I want my, up here it shows the function that I'm working with, so either up or down will change that. So I'm working with my third degree function, and I want to go to a left bound. Uh, you'll see what they're asking for right here. So you can either move uh, your cursor or you can put an x value in. So we could put negative 2 in just by entering negative 2 as our left bound. And then it asks us for a right bound. So um, we could use uh, negative 1 as our right bound. I'll just enter it instead of moving my cursor. And then they want to guess. So I'm going to move the cursor to about where it hits its maximum. And it looks like it hits its maximum at a negative one and one third. So in this point then, it, right here and here, is a negative one and one third. So our function goes uphill. In other words, it has a positive slope. on the interval from negative infinity to a negative four-thirds, which is negative one and one-third. So we have a positive slope up until I hit this point. Then at x equal negative four-thirds, um, it has a zero slope. at x equal a negative four-thirds. And then it starts going downhill until it reaches the origin here, uh, or rather x equals zero. So it has a negative slope. on the interval from negative four-thirds to zero. And then, again, it has that horizontal tangent line, so zero slope. And 
at x equals 0. And then um, past that, um, it seems to be heading uphill until we hit positive infinity. So f of x has a positive slope on the interval from 0 to positive infinity. Right. Now let's look at our derivative graph on the interval from negative infinity to negative 4 thirds my derivative is above the axis so f prime above x axis then when x is equal to a negative 4 thirds my derivative crosses the x axis Then on the interval from negative 4 thirds to 0, my derivative graph is below the x-axis. Then at x equals 0, my derivative graph crosses the x-axis. And then on the interval from 0 to positive infinity, my graph of the derivative is above the x-axis. So there is a relationship between the graph of a function and the graph of its derivative. Also note that my f of x, my function, is third degree. And my derivative, f prime, is second degree.